Nokia's long-awaited Android phone is here at last in the Nokia X. But what is Nokia's take on Android? What are its features and what is it missing? Let's take a look. Let's start by talking about the home screen. Now, this doesn't look anything like regular Android. In fact, Nokia has tweaked it to look much more like it, the Windows Phone operating system. As such, you get these colorful, blocky tiles. They can be moved around and resized as well. You can also change the color of some of them. If you swipe down from the top, you do get an Android-esque notification pane. Uh, seeing as this is a dual SIM phone, that lets you switch SIM cards. And you can also do things like manage Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Another major part of this interface is what Nokia calls Fastlane. You access that by sweeping to the right, and this shows you all of your recently used apps as well as notifications. Interestingly, unlike Android, there's no dedicated place to find all of your apps. They're just all on the home screen, so you will have to scroll up and down until you find the one you're looking for. That could get a little annoying. Now, although it's Android at its core, there's not a Google app in sight here. Instead, the apps it comes preloaded with are from Nokia and Microsoft. So you get things like Skype, Nokia's Here Maps, or Microsoft's OneDrive. In fact, apps are likely to be the most contentious part of Nokia's take on Android. And that's because, unlike most Android devices, these phones don't have access to the Google Play App Store. Instead, you have to find your apps through Nokia's own App Store or third-party alternatives. If an Android developer wants to bring their app across, Nokia has to approve it, and they also will have to change their code slightly because of the way that Nokia handles billing. Nokia says you can sideload apps if you want to, but that's probably a little too technical for most people to bother with. Ultimately, then, the question is, does this tweaked version of Android really have enough apps to be tempting? And as to that, we're just going to have to wait and find out. So this interface is designed to be used on cheap Nokia phones. However, Android phones are getting cheaper all the time, so it's not like there's no competition. Another thing to bear in mind is that this interface is still in its early stages. I think its success could come down a lot to whether Nokia can persuade Android developers to get its apps onto this platform and quickly. It's an interesting strategy and an interesting take on Android. But what do you think? Have Nokia made a smart move or should they have stuck with something much more recognizable? Let me know and check out CNET.com for much more from Mobile World Congress.